TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Numbers chapter 11 verse uh, 27. There was a meeting that God asked Moses to call for 70 elders so that he could transfer spirit from the, from the man of God Moses to the 70 elders. 68 of them attended the meeting. Two men did not come. What are their names? And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. These are the two people who missed that meeting. When the Holy Spirit moved, uh, even these who did not come, the Spirit of God reached them wherever they were. Are we together? Now, the next verse, 28 and 29, says, So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Now, forbid them from doing what? From prophesying. Forbid them. May there be no spirit, attitude, saying, don't prophesy. You shall not be forbidden from prophesying. Are we together? Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Let's read that in NIV. Verse 29. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets. And that the Lord will put his spirit on them. Now, that's a very foundational verse for this series of teaching. How I wish that you too is a prophet. And that God would put his spirit upon you. What is the goal of our teaching? That all people may be prophetic. Yani mungu alipenda sana kwamba kila mtu ambaye ni mtu wake awe na uwezo wa kujua neno la Mungu na kwamba Mungu awe juu yake the spirit of the lord listen let me lay certain foundation right now somebody say prophetic ministry we will be defining prophetic ministry and prophet and all that but listen a prophet if I ask you who is a prophet, you tell me is somebody who hears from God and speaks God's message. That's true, alright? There is no way we can be accurate on love, I mean, love and know the prophetic without certain foundational matters in place. So I want you to write this down because it's important. Number one, a desire and love for the word of God. You must have a desire for the word. You must have love for the word of God. You must so love the word of God that you miss it. You long for the word. Whether it is written word, that's where we begin. The written word of God. Let's have a desire for this word. Reading this word. Glory to God. Because even if an angel spoke to you, or you had a dream, or you had a vision, or you had a voice, it will be measured and tested by this word of God. If it's not in line with the word of God, then we are allowed to throw it away. Are we together? So there must be a foundation in your life. Don't just be a spiritist. Living only in the spirit. 
You only hear talk of what you heard and saw in the spirit. No, 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 no. You need to lay this very strongly in your spirit. The written word is a foundation of anything God is saying. Whatever he says is going to agree with this one. Number two. The prophetic needs this second foundation. Ability to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, be able to fellowship with the Holy Spirit because that is the agent of communication. The Holy Spirit is the one who speaks to us, is the one who brings the message by the Spirit we know. So everything concerning the Holy Spirit, like being filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Spirit, uwezo na wepo, wakuongea na roo mtakatifu, kuzungu mzana ruga, kuomba, kujiachilia mbele zake, kwamba unajua roo mtakatifu. That's very, very, very important because without the Holy Spirit, then it's not going to be possible for us to make any claim. Are we together? And in the New Testament, they spoke in terms of the prophetic glory to God. So those are very important two foundational principles and points and keys. The word of God and the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Number three, you know, there is no way we can know the mind of God and so forth without prayer. Many times when I've heard God speak is in prayer. So, lazima upende maombi kama utasikia kutoka kwa bwana. Bila maombi, hizi sauti zingine zitakuwa zako jana ama vitu vinavyo kusumbua vina kuzungumzia the stress and troubles inside of you are a very loud voice later when we'll be teaching on how to hear the voice of god we'll teach you how to quieten down your spirit how to silence other voices that speak to us are we together so you must learn and love prayer and communion with the spirit and that takes time prayer is work are you listening to me Especially for an Nairobian to pray. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. This city moves so fast. Time in the morning is very little. You have to connect to work. You come home late. You got to cook, eat, and so forth. You have social media to check. I mean, minimum hour, a woman of the word. If you are not able to uh, walk with the Holy Ghost, interact with the spirit of god through fellowship and baptism if you're not able to pray your prophetic messages are suspect all right what is prophetic ministry It is the outworking of God outworking of God. In other words, God is in you but he is working out to, you know, towards outside. The outworking of God in a Holy Spirit filled believer. In a Holy Spirit filled believer. So the outworking of God in a Holy Spirit filled believer or Holy Spirit filled Christian life. So, as a direct result, or his ability, as a direct result, or his ability to perceive and recognize, to perceive and recognize, to perceive and recognize the present tense word. Or voice of God. 
to perceive and recognize the present tense word or voice personally to you, to me, to them. That voice of God is to me, to them. And guess what? Is demonstrated by a commitment. It's a very long sentence, but you're going to get it. I'll break it down. Which is demonstrated by a commitment to be obedient to that voice. To be obedient to that voice. Here are the key phrases for explanation of what a prophetic ministry is. God working through you. Somebody say God working through me. Who is the person whom God is working through? A Holy Spirit filled believer. Glory to God. That's a second important phrase. You need to be a Holy Spirit filled believer. A Christian who is submitted to the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Now, the third important phrase in this description of what prophetic ministries are about. This believer uh, has the ability to perceive and recognize the voice of God. Ability to perceive and recognize the voice of God. But that voice of God, it is a voice of God that is telling us something about today, here and now, or is telling us from here what is coming in the future. Now, and then having, her, having perceived, recognized that voice of God, there has to be a personal commitment to obey what that word is. So, God is working, wanting, willing to talk to his people, his church. Glory to God. Now, let me give you a tenfold outline of some of the things that we're going to teach as we get along. Uh, prophetic in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is full of prophets. And I'm telling you, there are so many. Jeremiah, Ezekiah, Isaiah, major ones and minor ones. So, that when we hear the prophetic, the first thing that happens to us, our minds run to the Old Testament and we see the prophets in the Old Testament. Number two, the New Testament has prophets too. There are also prophets in the New Testament within the church, family, and ministry in the New Testament. There are prophets. So we'll mention that as it were. Number three, types of prophets. What are the types of prophets we see in the Bible? Because if we can know God in his many-sided wisdom. Because God has many-sided wisdom as it were. He looks at stuff and teaches us from many sides and angles. Types of prophets. Number four, we need to look at prophecy as the voice of God. What is prophecy? We'll do that later. Number five, hearing the voice of God. We need to learn to hear the voice of God. Glory to God. We need number six to ask. Yet prophesy. That's something major. There are those who are gifted. Others are not gifted. Yet they are prophesied. We need to know. Therefore what is the source of that prophecy. Or could it be divination or connecting with another spirit as it were. Number eight, methods of prophesying. There are methods of prophesying. We'll need to look at that before Jesus returns. Number nine, judging prophecy. How do you judge a word? Judging prophecy. Number ten, protocols of prophetic ministry. I think protocols of prophetic ministry. To Gimaliza, you, I think, got a certificate. It's a good Protocols of prophetic ministry. Are you ready for me? Because I'm ready for you. The amazing, amazing thing about the word of God is that there, are, there is one English word and then you find in the Hebrew there are different words used. So for prophet, you really need to go deep and say what type of prophet are you talking about? Glory to God. Now, so we have 
almost five or six words. The first one is Nabi. N-A-B-I. Now, this one is like Swahili because the Swahili word is Nabi. Are we together? So, throughout the Bible, we find several Hebrew and Greek words that are translated prophet. So, in our understanding of how prophecy works and so forth, then it's necessary for us to look at the different types of prophets and prophecy taught in the word of God. Now, these are the various words. One is Nabi. This is a general Hebrew word for prophet. This is what Nabi, Nabi means. It means one who proclaims, one who announces. So, he proclaims the word. Anatangaza neno. He announces it. He announces. Number three, he declares the word. Nabi declares. Or four, he utters communications. So, a Nabi is the one who utters communications. Is a spokesman. A Nabi is a spokesman or a herod or herader. One who takes a message, runs with it as a herod. That's a Nabi. Now, this word Nabi is related with the word reveal. So, a Nabi reveals the message which he ends up proclaiming, announcing, declaring, uttering as a communication. Reveal. This word also implies a supernatural message that bubbles up or springs forth. Excuse me. A supernatural message that bubbles up or springs forth. A Nabi will have a word of God yelling, moving, belly shall flow, rivers of living water. So he has supernatural message bubbling up or springing forth. Now, in First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 20, this is a word Nabi used concerning this uh, prophet here. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord or established as a Nabi. So Samuel often was a herald, was a spokesman of God, for God proclaimed, announced, declared, and said things as led by the Spirit. Now this word, Nabi, is either masculine or feminine and therefore can refer to either a prophet of God, whether he's male or female, doesn't matter, or even a false prophet who brings a message uh, that could be contrary to God's character or will. You remember, Balaam was very accurate, but his message was not in line with God's character, for he taught Israel how to sin against God, you know, by giving counsel to Moabites to defile Israel. And though he had been accurate, his messages were never in line with God's character, yet he operated as a Nabi. Are we together? The second word in Hebrew is Roe. Roe or Roe, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, or Roe, R-O-E-H, R-O-E-H. This is a Hebrew word, seer, the Hebrew word for seer, S-E-E-R. These prophets see the circumstances, seer see the circumstances, and gain revelation on how to move past what they have seen. So they see circumstances, then they gain revelation on how to move past it. An example is 1 Samuel 9, 9. Uh, Samuel not only operated as a Nabi, but also operated as a seer. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 9, 9, formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus, Come, let us go to the seer. For he who is now called a prophet was formerly called what? A seer. A seer is probably the most misunderstood of the prophetic types. They are the ones who have visions and they have visual impressions. They see things in the spirit. They have impressions and so forth. Now, this type of prophet can look at something. They can look at something and receive a supernatural message through that image. They can look at someone and they receive a supernatural uh, message uh, from what they see. Uh, that helps me quite a bit because 
sometimes when I'm ministering and I prophesy to people, I see somebody, then I see beyond that, and I see the message from God, and then, you know, I'm able to release that. Many times you see in scripture, the Lord asking a prophet, what do you see? What do you see? Like in Jeremiah, uh, he was being asked, what do you see? And he said, I see an almo tree. Glory to God. So the Lord has used this method to communicate and speak to the prophets through seeing. Let's agree, ladies and gentlemen, that we're not just going to teach right now. I activate the anointing. Whatever I'm describing, may it be installed in your spirit. So, all those who don't see anything, may you begin to see. You may look at this keyboard, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God will give you a message by just seeing. Are we together? Though I've released that impartation to see, you still have to be trained on how to know that you have actually seen. And actually what you have heard is not your Ugali which is speaking. Okay? But let me remove something from your mind right now because I can see it. Not all of you, some of you. Many people, when you hear the word prophet, the first thing that comes to your mind is false prophet. Where did you get that from? Why are you so negative? Huh? That when you hear something, you are always in the opposition. I hear Kenyans are always in there. They oppose anything. So, so when you hear prophet, the first thing that comes to your mind is, I'm sure he is not here. I'm sure, uh, whatever. No, shift your mentality. Are we together? In the marketplace, they will tell you, when you see a cup half full, some people will say it is half empty. Where did you learn that from? From your grandmother? Or your father? Or whatever. So you need to begin to shift your mind. Expect, expect, expect God to do stuff with you. Don't say, well, I may fail. I may not see. Who told you? I'm here to tell you you will begin to see. You will begin to hear. You will begin to know. Forget about negativity. Are we together? So. Number three. Chose. Chose. Or Kose. C-H-O-Z-E-H is another Hebrew word for prophet. This word, chose, is also translated as a seer, which is connected with a watchman. Somebody say, a watchman. Now, chose was often associated with the service one of us to a reigning king. If there is a king who is reigning, the services you offer to that king is like chose. So a prophet is like one who watches the affairs of the king. Glory to God. You serve the king and when you are serving him, it's like you are word. You are there as a prophet. So chose is a type of a prophet who is there to support and serve the king. Number four is Shama. S-H-A-M-A-R. Shama. This is another Hebrew word translated as watchman. This is also a watchman. This prophet watched after God's word. They watch after God's word and have tremendous wisdom for walking through life as watchmen. Glory to God. So, they watch over what? God's word. They are waiting to see the word. What is God saying? 
They are watching and waiting. Wanakesha na kuomba working God. Waone neno la bwana. Now, the word is not just heard. The word sometimes is seen. You see the word. Look at Isaiah 1.1. 1, 1. The Bible says, The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he did what? Which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So he saw a vision. Look at Amos 1.1. 1, 1. Amos 1.1 1, 1 says, The words of Amos who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel. So this guy saw the words. Are we together? I pray that your eyes begin to see the word of God. 